a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Battle of Lima Site 85 The Battle of Lima Site 85, also called Battle of Po Phi was fought as part of a military campaign waged during the Vietnam War and Laotian Civil War by the North Vietnamese Army and the Pat Het Lao, against airmen of the United States Air Force First Combat Evaluation Group. Elements of the Royal Lao Army, Royal Thai Border Patrol Police, and the Central Intelligence Agency led Mong Clandestine Army. The battle was fought on Po Phi Thi Mountain in Hua Phan H Province, Laos, on 10 March 1968 and derives its name from the mountaintop, where it was fought or from the designation of a 700 feet landing strip in the valley below, and was the largest single ground combat loss of United States Air Force members during the Vietnam War. During the Vietnam War, and the Laotian Civil War, Po Phi Thi Mountain was an important strategic outpost which had served both sides at various stages of the conflict. In 1966, the United States Ambassador to Laos approved a plan by the United States Air Force to construct a Takan site on top of Po Phi Thi, as, at the time they lacked a navigation site with sufficient range to guide U.S. bombers towards their targets in North Vietnam. In 1967 the site was upgraded with the Air Transportable All-Weather and Slash TSQ-81 radar bombing control system. This enabled American aircraft to bomb North Vietnam and Laos at night and in all types of weather, an operation code named Commando Club. Despite U.S. efforts to maintain the secrecy of the installation, which included the sheep dipping of the airmen involved, U.S. operations at the facility did not escape the attention of the North Vietnamese and Pat Het Lao forces. Towards the end of 1967, North Vietnamese units increased the tempo of their operations around Po Phi Thi, and by 1968 several attacks were launched against Lima Site 85. In the final assault on 10 March 1968, elements of the VPA 41st Special Forces Battalion attacked the facility, with support from the VPA 766th Regiment and 1 Pat Thet Lao Battalion. The Hmong and Pai forces that were defending the facility were overwhelmed by the combined North Vietnamese and Pat Het Lao forces. Background Po Phi Thi is a remote mountain in Hua Phan H province, northeastern Laos. The mountain, which is about 1,700 meters high, is located within the former Royal Lao Army's military region 2, and about 24 kilometers from the border of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam and 48 kilometers away from Sam Nua, the Pat Het Lao capital. For the local Hmong and Yo tribes that lived in the area, Po Phi Thi was a place of religious significance. They believed it was inhabited by spirits possessing supernatural powers to exercise control over their lives. However, the United States Air Force saw Po Phi Thi as an ideal location for installing a radar navigation system to assist U.S. pilots in their bombing campaigns in North Vietnam and along the Ho Chi Minh Trail inside Laos. Laos was a neutral country according to the International Agreement on the Neutrality of Laos signed on 23 July 1962. Therefore, the United States was prohibited from openly conducting military operations in the kingdom. Activities undertaken by the USAF in Laos had to be approved by the U.S. Ambassador to Laos William H. Sullivan. When the plan to install a navigation system on Po Phi Thi Mountain was proposed, Sullivan initially opposed it as he thought that Laotian Prime Minister Prince Suvanafuma would not allow his country to be involved in an aerial offensive against North Vietnam. However, Suvanafuma did permit the installation, on the condition that it not be manned by U.S. military personnel. In August 1966, the USAF installed a Takant system, an autonomous radio transmitter that provided pilots with distance and bearing relative to the station on Po Phi Thi. In 1967, under the code name Heavy Green, the facility was upgraded with the TSQ-81, which could direct and control attacking jet fighters and bombers to their targets and provide them with precise bomb release points. It began operating in late November 1967 as Operation Commando Club to operate the equipment within the limitations imposed by the Laotian Prime Minister. USAF personnel assigned to work at the installation had to sign paperwork that temporarily released them from military service and to work in the guise of civilian technicians. From Lockheed Martin, the process is euphemistically called sheep dipping. In reality, 
They operated as members of the USAF circuit rider teams, from the first mobile communications group based at Udorn Royal Thai Air Force Base who rotated to the site every seven days. Personnel working at the Takan site were supplied by weekly flights of the 20th Special Operations Squadron, based at Udorn of Phnom Northeastern Thailand operating under the code name Operation Pony Express, using Lima Site 85, the 700 meters airstrip constructed by the Central Intelligence Agency in the valley below. Mong General Vang Pao, who spearheaded the Allied war effort against North Vietnamese and Patet Lao forces in Military Region 2, was entrusted with the task of guarding the facility using the Hmong clandestine army alongside CIA-funded Thai Border Patrol police forces. Though substantial resources were invested to maintain the facility, the USAF command doubted Vang Pao's ability to defend the installation. Accordingly, all equipment and explosives attached so that if the site was overrun, it could be quickly destroyed. By late 1967, Lima Site 85's radar directed 55% of all bombing operations against North Vietnam. Prelude As USAF ground controllers were able to guide attacking aircraft against North Vietnamese targets in all types of weather, installation of the TSQ-81 radar system on Pofa T was considered to have been extremely successful during the final months of 1967. Yet a formerly top-secret after-action report credited Commando Club with guiding the following sorties, at the same time. Commando Club was directing missions westward into Operation Barrel Rolls B sector, as Communist forces bypassed LS-85 in their push deeper into Laos to attack Nam Bak. The trend of LS-85 being forced to use its capabilities toward defending itself instead of flying offensive missions into Vietnam is evident from the tables above. Successes of the system also brought about worries for the personnel on the ground. Major Richard Secord, who was responsible for the security of Lima Site 85, was concerned about the safety of the unarmed USAF technicians working there dressed as civilians. He requested Green Berets be assigned as on-site security. Ambassador Sullivan turned down the request. Sullivan repeatedly insisted the civilian personnel at Lima Site 85 should not be armed, but Secord decided to equip the technicians with weapons. M16 assault rifles, fragmentation grenades, concussion grenades, and other small arms were then brought in. Secord said that given the site's meager defenses, he felt the site could not be held against a serious assault. Sikord's fears were justified, as USAF reconnaissance aircraft regularly flying over northeastern Laos in 1967 revealed that the paved roads constructed by the North Vietnamese were obviously approaching Po Phu T. Road constructing activities were observed along Route 6 and 19, which connected Dien Bien Phu in North Vietnam with Po Phu T and Nam back in Laos. Realizing the North Vietnamese would try to destroy the installation, Secord advised the U.S. Embassy in Vientiane to evacuate all U.S. personnel. However, high-ranking U.S. officials insisted that Lima Site 85 should operate as long as possible, as it helped save the lives of U.S. pilots every day it remained in operation. In December 1967, a communist military offensive in the region was signaled by a series of skirmishes. On 15 December, CIA-led Hmong reconnaissance patrols detected both the North Vietnamese and Patet Lao battalions moving against Nam Bak, at the time the stronghold of the Royal Lao Army. On 16 December, two Patet Lao companies overran Po Den Din, only 12 kilometers east of Lima Site 85. Shortly afterwards, however, Hmong units recaptured the village. Towards the end of 1967, U.S. controllers at Lima Site 85 directed F-4, F-105, and A-1 fighter bombers based in Thailand and South Vietnam in airstrikes against North Vietnamese and Patet Lao formations that were massing around the U.S. facility at Po Phu T. At 26 invaders were called in to make night missions, targeting movements of the enemy ground troops on Route 6 and Route 19. On 14 January 1968, the situation in northeastern Laos continued to worsen, as an estimated four North Vietnamese infantry battalions captured the Laotian government's stronghold at Nam Bak. Despite the growing threat from North Vietnamese forces, the U.S. military was still not permitted to reinforce the installation on Phu Mountain due to political sensitivities. 
The defense of Lima Site 85 was assigned to two CIA paramilitary officers who led about 1,000 Hmong soldiers, with 200 men guarding the ridgeline and the remaining 800 in the valley below. They were reinforced by a Thai Border Patrol Police Battalion of 300 men. In the first week of 1968, the combined North Vietnamese and Pat Het Lao forces probed Royal Laos Army positions in the area by launching several artillery attacks. On 10 January, a Pat Het Lao patrol was driven from the area by the Hmong soldiers, fearing the explosives attached to their equipment could be detonated. By incoming artillery rounds, U.S. technicians dismantled the charges and threw them over the cliff. On 12 January, CIA spotters reported a four-aircraft formation flying in the direction of Lima Site 85. They were Soviet-made Antonov and two biplanes. Two aircraft continued towards Lima Site 85, while the others turned away. The Vietnam People's Air Force, in one of its few air attacks during the conflict, tried to destroy the radar at Lima Site 85. The Antus flew over Po for tea and their crewmen dropped 120 mm mortar shells through the aircraft's floor and then strafed their targets, with 57 mm rockets mounted on the wing pods. As they repeatedly attacked the facility, ground fire heavily damaged one and two, and it crashed into a mountainside. By now, CIA officers and U.S. controllers at Lima Site 85 had managed to contact an Air America helicopter, which was faster than the Soviet-made biplanes. The Huey pilot Captain Ted Moore sighted the remaining in two, and promptly gave chase. As he pulled alongside, flight mechanic Glenn Woods armed with an AK-47 assault rifle opened fire and caused the biplane to crash into a ridge. The remaining in twos had observed the attack from a distance and managed to escape without damage. Four Mongs, two men and two women, had been killed by the communist attack. Nevertheless, the TSQ-81 radar and its associated equipment was undamaged. Shortly afterwards, what remained of one of the N2 biplanes was put on display in front of the Bat Luang Monument, Vien Dian's most important Buddhist shrine, as proof of North Vietnamese military activities in the kingdom. Despite the attack, the U.S. Embassy in Vien Dian and the USAF refused to alter their strategy for defending Lima Site 85. Lieutenant Colonel Clarence F. Blanton, commander of USAF personnel at the facility, was given no authority to supervise his own perimeter or to order a retreat if they again came under attack. Throughout January and February, intelligence collected by the Hmongs confirmed that a major assault on Lima Site 85 was being prepared, but Sullivan and the U.S. military took no steps to strengthen the defenses. In late February, a combat controller, Technical Sergeant James Gary, arrived to augment the defenses by directing airstrikes. He was replaced in this duty by Sergeant Roger D. Huffman on about the 4th of March. North Vietnamese Plan and Preparations On the 18th of February 1968, a North Vietnamese artillery survey team was ambushed near Lima Site 85 by Hmong reconnaissance teams, killing a North Vietnamese officer in the process. The dead officer, who was a major, carried a notebook which revealed a plan to attack Po Phu Thi by using three North Vietnamese battalions and one Pat Thet Lao battalion. Consequently, U.S. personnel at Lima Site 85 directed 342 airstrikes within 30 meters of their own facility to disrupt their opponents' build-up during 20 the 29th of February. Unknown to the USAF, however, the Vietnam People's Army had also drawn up a plan to capture Lima Site 85 by deploying its special forces. The task of capturing the U.S. facility was entrusted to a platoon from the VPA 41st Special Forces Battalion, led by 1st Lieutenant Truong Muk. The platoon numbered 33 soldiers, and they were reinforced by a nine-man sapper squad and a communications and cryptography squad. Prior to the mission, Muk's soldiers had undergone nine months of special training mainly focused on mountain fighting techniques and jungle operations. They also conducted physical conditioning, to improve their physical fitness and stamina, to undertake operations in the most extreme conditions on Laotian territory. On 18 December 1967, following their intensive training, soldiers of the VPA 41st Special Forces Battalion launched the first phase of their operation by conducting terrain reconnaissance and watching activities on Lima Site 85 to learn their opponents' routines. 
as part of the second phase, commenced on the 22nd of January 1968. Six North Vietnamese sappers were sent out to climb Po Phu Thi Mountain, in order to pinpoint opposing positions in and around Lima Site 85, as well as routes of withdrawal. On 28 February 1968, the North Vietnamese Special Forces completed their preparations, and they began marching towards their assembly point on 1 March. To maintain the elements of secrecy and surprise, Muck was ordered to avoid contact with local civilians and opposing military forces. In the event they were engaged by opposing forces, the North Vietnamese would deploy a small force to deal with the situation while the main formation would continue moving to their objective on Po Phu Thi. Once the North Vietnamese formation had arrived at their assembly area, they were to be divided into two assault groups. The first assault group, under Muke's direct command, was divided into five cells to attack key targets at Lima Site 85. Cells 1 and 2 were given the mission of capturing the communications center, with the latter given the secondary role of supporting cell 3, which was given the main mission of seizing the Takan site and eliminating all U.S. personnel. Cell 4 was to capture the airstrip, and cell 5 was placed in reserve. Second Lieutenant Nguyen Viet Hung was given responsibility to lead the second assault group with the mission of neutralizing the Thai positions. The attack would commence during the early hours of 9 or the 10th of March. To capture Lima Site 85, the North Vietnamese Special Forces were equipped with three Chinese-made K-54 pistols, 23 AK-47 assault rifles, four 7.62mm carbines and three rebounds per game 7 rocket-propelled grenade launchers. They carried 200 rounds of ammunition for each AK-47 rifle, six rounds for each rebounds per game. 400 grams of explosives, and six hand grenades. The weapons load, in addition to 15 days of rations, and other personal items, required each North Vietnamese Special Force soldier to pack between 42 kilograms to 45 kilograms. Shortly after the North Vietnamese Special Forces arrived at the assembly point, they moved off to an undisclosed location for two days, to test fire all their weapons, and to ensure their explosives were in good working order. Then, in an attempt to fool Mong and U.S. intelligence, the North Vietnamese made diversionary movements against Muang Sun to cover their main assault. On 9 March, elements of the VPA 41st Special Forces Battalion arrived in the vicinity of Po Phu Thi, where they made final preparations for their assault. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to know more?